In the last video, we used the Mocha Pro plugin to create three masks to mask out the mirrors and Jimmy's head so that the camera tracker is not confused by these. Now we will perform the camera track itself within Fusion. We then want to bring in a camera tracker, feed in our source footage here, feed this into the mask of the camera tracker itself and preview some auto track locations. So a couple things about the camera tracker. On the auto track defaults, sorry, the new track defaults, it defaults to this optical flow tracker, which I found works really well in some scenes. Um, it's terrible in this one. It doesn't produce usable tracks. So I'm going to switch this to the planar tracker leave these as the defaults and then I'm going to change the minimum feature size we had set it to 0.394 to a little bit smaller of a value in order to get a few more tracks out of this there need to be at least eight at any given part of the scene we can find somewhere in here we get quite a few of them at this point, we press auto track and we let it track. It's not very fast, so I will see you in a few minutes. Now that the track is finished, we then move to the second step, which is to try and solve this. A couple of things to set for solving options. First of all, I'm going to enable lens parameters because I don't know the particulars of the camera that I shot this with. I don't actually know which camera I shot it with. The rest of these we can leave OK. However, I am going to turn off auto select seed frames. And I'm going to just set these to two frames that I found by scanning the scene. What we're looking for is part of the scene that undergoes a decent perspective shift but isn't too far apart so that we can have the same frames. Um, honestly, I found this by running the track once with it not selected and then I tuned them up a little bit to have what looked like more of a, of a perspective shift. So we select Solve and with if you don't have the, if you have it auto-selecting the seed frames, this takes quite a bit of time. It's a good bit faster if you pick the seed frames yourself. So what happens is we get a solve error of 1.189 pixels. This is not too bad. Um, it did find some things about our camera. But I think we can clean this up pretty good by starting with this track filtering just select the tracks with the errors. This is 34 out of 411 tracks were selected. So we start by just deleting those. We've got a lot of tracks still there, and we'll just hit solve again. Comes through, it'll take about the same amount of time. Hopefully it'll do better. Uh, there are times where I've removed the bad tracks automatically like that and have the solve get much worse. But as you can see here, it got much better. We're now down to about a half a pixel of an error. So I can actually make this better by changing this max solve error from two and a half, bring this down to about a half, which takes away a good chunk, almost about a quarter of our tracks. And we're just gonna delete, because it doesn't like them. And we're gonna run the solve one more time. Give it about 13 seconds, and now we're down to less than 0.2 pixels for a solve error. So, in general, the, the solve error, I mean, the average solve error is going to be the average amount of jitter you would see the points of the solution making as it moves through the frame. Because we've removed any that are greater than a half a pixel, we shouldn't ever see more than a half a pixel of jitter in our solution. The next thing we want to do with this camera track that we've made 
is export it so that we can use that camera in a scene within Houdini. In order to do this, I will go into the camera tracker I've created to this fourth tab, which is the scene export. A couple things about this that we'll need to do a few times. First thing, just click the export button. This creates a bunch of nodes with one of them connected to our input feed and everything else left unconnected. If we go into this and view this node, you get basically your node and then this kind of random ground plane. So we haven't told the camera tracker what any of these points mean. So it seems to kind of just average everything together for the default ground plane. It's not very useful. How this works is a little unusual. Inside this fourth tab, we open up the 3D scene transform. We change it to unaligned. Then we need to set these things manually. So I will pick, let me go here to my first seed frame. We'll pick some point that seems interesting, such as that one. We'll call that our origin, just set from selection. Then I'm going to pick a bunch of points that should all be in the same plane. In this case, the floor is pretty good ground plane for us. So we'll just pick a handful of these points. I'm going to avoid these two because they're kind of close to this power line and then we'll set that from the selection. This just throws in some rotations of this plane. For the scale, probably don't need to worry too much about this. I'm just gonna guess that this is about a meter. Uh, it's estimating it's 0.94, so the scale is reasonably close anyway. Then I change this back to aligned, which is kind of weird because now you have these numbers that can't be edited and we update the previous export. The plane shifts around a bit. It's really hard to tell where it is because it covers everything. So what I like to do is just go in and add a 3D cube, throw that into the merge. It'll show up at the origin and it needs to be shrunk a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to set its size down to maybe 0.25. It also extends below the origin, which will make it look, well, show you. So I don't actually know why it's tracking OK. It shouldn't be. So if we've got it to be 0.24, if we go in here and do a Y translation of 0.12, apparently in the other direction, this should track the ground quite well. This gives us an idea of how well our tracker worked. In fact, if you are okay with fairly simplistic lighting, the track that comes out of Fusion, the 3D that comes out of Fusion, may be perfectly adequate for what you want. But the purpose of my video is to show how to do this with Houdini. So we need to do that. I'm going to leave the 3D object in here because it helps us verify the scene inside of Houdini. So what we want is what's called an FBX exporter. And I'm going to go into my working directory. I just call this Jimmy Track A. So it doesn't put this in the right place. This needs to be taken from the output of the Merge 3D node. You want to be outputting all of this 3D geometry, not the 2D scene from the Tracker renderer. 
that's just a utility for us to view these things. As long as I set this path correctly, frame rate to 20, leave everything in. I don't think that matters, but what's important is don't render this per file. And then what we do is under the Fusion menu, this is a little tricky to find the first time since there isn't a great big Render button, Render All Savers. And this will play through the scene, writing an FBX file containing our geometry. And this is going to take a couple minutes. I will be see you in a minute. At this point, we have an FBX file that captures a bit of the 3D scene, including a model of how the camera moved when it was filmed. In the next video, we will import this file into Houdini and use it to build a 3D model of an object we will insert into this scene.